Hi guys and welcome back to Redstone Productions. Today we are visiting the Eve Audio Factory here in Berlin. I'm with Roland, the actual designer, general manager of the factory and the whole company. Could you please tell us a little bit more about your own company and these beautiful designs of speakers over here? <laughs> Thank you very much. First, um, welcome to Eve Audio. It's a pleasure to have you here. We are here in our acoustic lab. So we have a, a huge anechoic chamber. We have a huge echo chamber. We have seen that before. And um, so we can do all these um, R&D work from scratch with, with the speaker. So we can do the 3D construction, we can do the electronic uh, design. So we have the cap capability and it's very nice. So every single speaker that we see here on display and even more models that you have, how they have been designed here at this course, facility, tested, yes. measured multiple yes. times, went back to yes. research and development. Yes to end yeah. up in the final yeah. uh, product line. To be responsible for the design, it's, uh, it's very important uh, to me. And um, of course, with, with our Anechoic Chamber, we can really go into the uh, speakers with the detailed measurements. But beside all these technical uh, stuff and the frequency, uh, frequency charts, what we have and the frequency responses, in the end, I do the fine tuning here in this uh, room with listening different kind of music, uh, big classical pieces, orchestra with a score following the different voices. And then I do the fine tuning and in the end I hope I have a very good result. I mean the final products speak for themselves, so <laughs> really good job. Uh, one really cool thing, of course, besides the Anikoi Chamber, is one of the very first ones I got the chance to see <laughs> and it's obviously overwhelming. You cannot yeah, stay a, there for longer than, yeah, I don't know, 20 a, minutes. It's really a special experience if you have uh, So that's, uh, first that's time, yeah. really a yeah. big asset you guys mm -hmm. have here mm -hmm. in place. So you yeah. can actually do proper measurements in, uh, let's say, in completely uncolored space with no yeah. reflections yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. But then you don't just stop there where most of the manufacturers do stop, mm -hmm. but you actually place the speakers in, let's say, in a normal room environment yeah. Yeah. and you make sure that they can actually also stress test it mm -hmm. and you can hear the final results in what it would be a normal kind of room scenario. Yeah. I think yeah. that's extremely important. Something also very, very unique about your speakers, well, there's two things that are extremely unique, I would say. One is the actual Twitter design and mm -hmm. the other one is the fact that you combine also DSP technology built yeah. into the yeah. speaker. When I started uh, with Eve Audio, I had to design analog or digital and what I wanted to have from the beginning, uh, this uh, front knob operation where I have access to volume and to the filter settings. Okay. Of course, you can have the solution with dip switches on the backside, but I wanted to have as easy as possible with the LED ring as a nice feature. Also, uh, to establish something uh, new, in, new in the market. If you have these uh, kind of front knob design, then immediately you have to use a microcontroller. And if you have a microcontroller, then it's uh, much more easier to control a DSP. To control analog electronic with uh, different crossovers in a filter section, it's uh, much more uh, complicated yes. and then much more expensive. If you switch off the speaker um, and you switch it on again, then the volume increases slowly so that you can jump to the master fader uh, if there is a loud signal so you will not destroy your ears. You will not hear it's, any pop or yes, any of that. Yes. Special tweeter we use is an air motion transformer. I redesigned uh, this tweeter completely. Different magnet uh, construction, different diaphragm uh, okay. size and also the fold geometry. So it's a completely new design. It's a complete new design and we only we don't have only this uh, tweeter. We have a small, a very small air motion transformer right. and we have a very big air motion transformer and the larger ones in the SC3010 and so like that. All these tweeters are developed here and the bigger um, air motion transformers are also produced here in-house. That's really interesting. And when it comes down to the DSP, you mentioned that the fact that you wanted to integrate a front knob yes. that allows you to have volume control, a mm -hmm. couple of shelves to kind of yes, tweak yes. the environment you're in. Uh, that of course implied in order to make it sustainable in terms of pricing to bring in a DSP into the picture. Yes. But what is this DSP actually taking care of and what use do you guys have in having that extra piece inside the actual... Yeah, and so the closing? DSP of course is um, doing the crossover. Right. And so the frequency separation oh. between the woofer and the tweeter. Um, limiters, of course, okay. and um, the, some adjustments in the frequency of sports is using uh, EQs, what you also have in an analog domain. Yeah. And uh, for me, very important was uh, 
kind of analog feeling with these speakers. When you have the speaker first time on desk, you just have to switch it on and increase the volume and then it plays like it is. So no setup, no um, software updates, no USB, um, no enter buttons, just um, see. like an analog uh, monitor. Um, and the, the filter um, functions are similar to an analog um, uh, filter section, so there's uh, not really a difference. What we can do on a DSP side, we can protect the, the drivers uh, much more uh, detailed uh, right. against overloading. And um, so we have a good limiter section uh, depending from the frequency, from the level, of course. I was really lucky enough to receive a pair of SC305. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first, honestly, I didn't even know there was a DSP in place. My yeah, experience yeah. with them, it was just, okay, plug an XLR on the back. Mm -hmm straight after, you know, out of your main mix, yeah, muscle yeah. fader. So basically you found a really smart and slick way to bring in the DSP advantages, yeah, but still yeah. without compromising the analog workflow. Something that really was interesting for me as well is to figure out that there's actually a three-way system in place there. I can see three drivers, yes, but I didn't think they were actually crossover to three different points. Yeah, yeah. it's a more two and a half system, so to right. say. Yeah, you see here uh, a tweeter and a uh, woofer. So this is uh, kind of an SC205. Mm -hmm. is a low mid-range right. driver and a tweeter. And then you have here a woofer. And this, uh, in a base, up to uh, 200, 300 hertz, both woofers are running parallel. And okay. then one woofer fades out and only for the mids is one woofer responsible. So, and then you have, of course, the crossover point to the tweeter. And um, you see, it is then unsymmetrical. And to, uh, of course, for stereo, you need a symmetrical setup. On, on the back side, you have a dip switch where you can just change the location of uh, the woofers. Mm -hmm. And for the sales channel, it's very uh, important not to have a left and a right uh, uh, speaker to sell. Correct. They just have a, a 305 and the customer can decide which one is left or right which just by with the flip right. of a yes. switch. Yeah. That's that's really brilliant. You guys don't stop there. I can see <laughs> extremely small speakers yes, up yes. to almost main monitoring mm -hmm. systems. Yeah. Uh, so you're trying to cover the whole pro audio range? Yes. Is yes. that your mission here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's my mission. <laughs> Most of them the same Twitter design of three different sizes yes. you mentioned? Yes. Um, now the, the magnetic construction behind is a little bit different. So the a smaller speaker they have of course uh, they don't need so much big magnetic system behind right. the 28 for example uh, they have larger magnet so right. because um, uh, in addition to the subwoofer they have to, um, they to have reach a, a certain uh, sound pressure level and here in the SC23 it's uh, a very small one but meant as a real full range studio monitor so it's okay. uh, the minus 3 dB point is around 60 Hertz wow this covers a lot and uh, if you put the speaker on a desk and perhaps close to a wall then they sound yeah. very Impressive. Even with the DSP, it's possible to have uh, an adjustment uh, to the different positions. And we have here a position uh, setting, and you can choose between three different positions. And one position is flat, that means uh, the speakers are staying on the stand, yeah. similar like here. Or you put it on a desk, then you have desk mode. And if you put a speaker on a desk, then you have, uh, because of the reflections of the desk, you right. have a quite huge um, increase in the low mid mid area. So and okay. to, yes. to have the speaker right sounding on the desk, of course, you have to you change that. that. And then we have an, a third mode, it's uh, called console. So if you put it on a meta bridge, then it's a different reflection uh, scenario. USB on the backside, class compliant, optical input, and uh, stereo RCA and the subwoofer output. Okay, so you can also integrate it with a point one system, yes, with a sub. Yes, yes. And I know you guys have a line of subwoofers as well, yes, active yes, subwoofers. Yes, we have 7 inch, 8 inch, 10 inch and 12 inch. These subwoofers came with a passive diaphragm, mm -hmm. uh, down firing the passive diaphragm so you don't have port noise, what yeah. can be very ugly in a subwoofer. And this is a gun with an also DSP inside. You can um, okay. go with a st uh, stereo signal into the subwoofer, then you go out with a stereo signal to the satellite. Okay. And, um, and the base and management system is built into the sub in, itself. Yes, filter stage for the satellites is purely analog, but okay. digitally controlled. So when you adjust the volume, also even possible with a remote control. So basically there's an analog to digital conversion that happens yes. 
within these speakers, these active speakers, mm -hmm. and then of course it needs to come back uh, with the decimator yes. filter back yeah. into the yeah. analog yeah. domain. Is there any major latency that might be problematic to no, musicians no, out no, there? No, no. We don't use FER filters mm -hmm. and uh, that avoids uh, these uh, problems and we have very low latency. It's, uh, so the latency um, of the listening distance is then it's lower. Al it's already greater than um, the yeah, actual. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's uh, yeah, that's of course uh, was a no-go. And the other thing I also wanted to ask you, just to keep it technical, what kind of amplifiers do you guys use? In for the three channel and for the SC27 and 205, it's, uh, the, for the bass is a class D and for okay. the tweeter it's an analog amplifier. Again, thank you so much for thank showing you. us around. It's been an incredible experience also to check out both the Rember Chamber and the Anechoic one. It was a pleasure, yeah. Uh, I hope to be back uh, sometime soon. But that's what we're trying to do here, trying to bring information out there for Studio Cats and also yeah, trying to really bring good. students to where the actual tools that we yeah. use in every day when we are in our old little battle cave, that, that's where they get designed from the guys behind the actual design itself. So again, thank you so much. Thank you very it much. It was my pleasure, man. It was a pleasure. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>